Hello everyone. I am Dr. Tonushri De of Haldia Institute of Technology and today our topic of discussion is polarization of light. So before we move on to polarization of light, we should know something about light that light is a transverse electromagnetic wave. Now what do you mean by a transverse wave? Transverse wave means that there is oscillation in the medium perpendicular to the direction of propagation of a wave. Now as we know that for light there is no medium needed. So what type of or whose oscillation are we talking about? The answer is in the second line that light is also an electromagnetic wave. It means that there is one electric field and one magnetic field associated with light which oscillate perpendicularly to the direction of propagation of light. So basically here we have three vectors, the electric field vector, magnetic field vector and the direct, um, propagation of light vector. All three vectors are mutually perpendicular to each other. Now while talking the whole or while taking the whole discussion about polarization, we will mainly focus on the electric field only because the electric field is responsible for the sensation of light in our eyes further the effect of electric field is much much greater than that of magnetic field because first the electric field itself is very high in amplitude than the magnetic field and again all the atoms or electrons all the charged particles of a material generally they are in static so electric field can work on them but magnetic field do not hamper them very much because magnet for magnetic field to act we need moving charged particles. So we will talk about the polarization in terms of electric field because the electric force is much more convenient to discuss. Now while going to polarization first we should know that what is unpolarized light. Now when light mm, is generated, how is it generated? The electrons from higher energy levels of the atoms, they move to the lower energy levels and they emit the radiation which is the electromagnetic wave or light. Now it totally depends on the molecules or the atoms which are generating the light. So the source can contain a large number of atoms pro producing waves with particular orientation of the electric field vector and the there is random orientation of excited molecules as a result the resultant wave is actually the superposition of waves with electric field vibrating in all possible directions but they must be perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light so here we can see that this represents an unpolarized light where we can have vibration in all possible directions. So we may assume that all the electric fields they can be resolved into two mutually perpendicular components. Here we can see that uh, we have resolved the light beam into two mutu mutually perpendicular components the yellow one and the sky color one. So the yellow one oscillates in the vertical plane whereas the sky one oscillates in the horizontal plane. So this is unpolarized light where you can have all the orientations of E. Now if anyhow we are able to cut off one of these mutually perpendicular components, what do we have in result? We have all the electric fields vibrating along one particular plane. This phenomena of producing polarized light from unpolarized one is called the polarization of light and here we restrict the electric field vector to a particular plane and most important one this is the characteristics of transverse wave. So the experiments on polarization they prove the transverse nature of light. 
uh, we have already mm, you know about interference diffraction all our properties of waves but we can see interference diffraction in sound waves also but this polarization phenomena cannot be observed in case of sound waves because longitudinal waves does not show polarization it can only be observed in transverse waves so we can see it in transverse mechanical waves also but here we will discuss the polarization of light which is a transverse electromagnetic wave now while talking or while discussing all these things um, we will use some notations um, so how unpolarized light is symbolized we can use this one or this one so in the first case here we have assumed that the electric or the light the wave vector is coming towards us so we, it is perpendicular to the board so all the electric field vectors they are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light direction of propagation is out of the board or into the board whatever in the next one this is the direction of propagation of light so to show unpolarized light we use both arrow and dot arrow means the vibration is on the plane of the board or the paper and the dot means the vibration is normal to the plane of the paper so if both the signs are present arrow and dot it is unpolarized if any one sign is present it is plane polarized and regarding this we have two more definitions that uh, what is plane of vibration and what is plane of polarization plane of vibration means where all the vibration of the electric field is taking place so it is a plane containing the direction of propagation of light and the electric field we have another definition called the plane of polarization plane of polarization is the plane perpendicular to the plane of vibration and it contains the light wave that is the direction of propagation of light and it is perpendicular to the plane of polarization so here in this picture we can see that one wave is moving along the z direction so z is the direction of propagation of the wave and uh, you can see that the electric field is oscillating in the yz plane so we can say that the plane of vibration here is the yz plane similarly the plane of polarization which will be the perpendicular plane it will be the xz plane as this plane contains the z axis now you can ask that why do we study polarization what is the need the first answer someone some student may give that it is in the syllabus we have to study but no apart from fundamental physics polarization has very large application in technology also so many of you have used polarized lenses in sunglasses so in sunglasses polaroids are used to reduce the glare and it is very soothing to our eyes whenever we watch 3d movies polarization technique is used there also generally whenever the movie is shot so there are camera two cameras are used using polaroids and they are kept as at a distance which is equal to the distance between our two eyes then the movie is shot and while seeing generally the theaters they give us this type of lenses here mm, two types of lenses are used and both of them have different or they have mutually perpendicular axis so we get to see only one type of polarized rays with one eye you can see that the yellow one passes through the light filter whereas the purple one passes through the light lens and as a result when our brain superpose them we see a three dimensional image in case of stress analysis in plastic industries 
there is also polarization techniques used so whenever there is stress there is change in the velocities of the light different lights and different types of polarized light pass through with different velocities and we get different color image where there is stress which determines uh, which place is brittle of a material so we use this polarization technique in many other places like infrared spectroscopy again to determine the chirality or optical activity of organic molecules in chemistry labs we use polarization techniques apart from these in lcd screens x-ray diffractometer microscopes and very ad various other optical instruments we use either polarized polarized light or polarization technique so this thing this theory is very important to learn now how to produce different pol plane polarized lights so there are various methods to produce plane polarized light the first one being the polarization by reflection so whenever an unpolarized light is reflected from a non metallic surface like snow glass etc the reflected light is always partially polarized brewster showed that for some special cases that is when the angle of incidence is certain the angle of incidence was later named after brewster's as brewster's angle or polarizing angle so whenever some incident angle called polarizing angle or brewster's angle the reflected ray is fully plane polarized with the vibration being perpendicular to the plane containing the rays and it is parallel to the reflecting plane and brewster's also observed that for such instances the incidence and that is when the incidence angle is polarizing angle or brewster's angle the angle between the refracted ray and the reflected ray is 90 degree so it was observed by brewster's and from there we got the brewster's law which states that the tangent of the polarizing angle or the brewster's angle is equal to the refractive index of the reflective medium with respect to the first medium so here you can say that the incident ray is unpolarized that is why we have used dots and arrows here the reflected rays is fully polarized fully plane polarized with the direction of electric field vibrating along the along normal to the plane containing all the rays so that is why we have used dots here and the refracted ray it is partially polarized so from snell's law we can say that mu equals to sin i by sin r here i is theta b so we can say that mu equals to sin theta b by sin r and r plus theta b equal to 90 degree which is clear from this picture this is theta b this is 90 degree and this is r so all add up to 180 degree so theta r plus theta b is 90 degree so we can get mu equals to sin theta b divided by sin 90 minus theta b we know sin 90 minus theta b is cos theta b so we get finally mu equal to tan theta b so this mu is the refractive index of the of this medium with respect to the upper medium now again there is another way to produce polarized light plain polarized light here the method is by refraction again we will take the help of brewster's law or brewster's angle rather so here we use piles of glass plate plates kept at brewster's angle to the incident light so that the reflected ray it will always be plain polarized but the refracted ray will be first partially polarized then after using a certain number of plates the refracted ray will also be plane polarized 
here the plane of vibration will be parallel to the plane containing the rays so thus by refraction also we can get plane polarized light next is the polarization by double refraction or birefringence so it is the most important technique of all because in practical uses we use this technique to produce different polarized lights so by refringence or double refraction as the name suggest there will be two refractions so a double refracting crystal like iceland spar or calcite refracts incident light into two refracted beams so if a, if an object is viewed using such crystals we can get two images just like this one here you can see that uh, we are viewing one line using the calcite crystal and the image there are in the image there are two lines so the phenomena in which a single incident ray breaks into two plane polarized rays whose vibrations are along and at right angles to the principal section of the crystal the phenomena is called double refraction or by refringence so this thing is very important here the vibrations are along and at right angles to the principal section of the crystal so here we get two plane polarized rays here you can see that this unpolarized light falls on the calcite crystal and it breaks into two rays one ray is having the arrow signs means the electric field vibrations are parallel to the board or to the principal section of the crystal and the other ray it has the dot signs which means the vibrations electric field vibrations are perpendicular to the board so we name them e ray and o ray e stands for extraordinary o stands for ordinary so e ray as it is extraordinary it does not follow any law it does not follow snell's law where o ray follows snell's so, law and both are plane polarized lights now why does this happen why there is two refractions in some crystals that is because of the anisotropy present in the crystal so what do you mean by anisotropy it means that the atmosphere everywhere inside the crystal is not same so the arrangement of atoms differ in different directions within an anisotropic crystal and as a result of this the physical properties like electrical conductivity thermal conductivity refractive index the velocities of light all differ along different directions inside an isotropic crystal so when this thing happens the e ray and o ray travel with different velocities along any direction in the anisotropic crystal why different velocities because they have different refractive indices due to the different atmosphere present inside the anisotropic crystals but there are some special directions along which both the rays travel with the same velocity these directions are called optic axis of the crystal and any crystal containing one optic axis are called uniaxial crystals the examples are calcite tourmaline again when there are two optic axis in a crystal we call them biaxial crystal examples are mica topaz so we don't get birefringence if the incident ray direction is parallel to the optic axis of the crystal in any other direction if the ray moves it splits into two rays and we get to see birefringence now our aim was to get one plane polarized ray but as you can see that in birefringence birefringence we get two plane polarized rays and finally they will 
meet and superpose each other but we don't want that thing to happen that is why we use polarizer so polarizer is a device which will give me one plain polarized light from unpolarized one so we can use nickel prism as polarizer nickel prism is basically made up of calcite crystal so let us check how does a nickel prism works so here you can see that it is made up of calcite crystal so we break the calcite crystal first diagonally then add them up with a special type of adhesive the adhesive is called canada balsam so it has a major role in forming the device so whenever an incident on an unpolarized ray is incident on a calcite crystal it first gets it first gets refracted into two rays it is divided now comes the role of the canada balsam layer so you have heard about total internal reflection so when total internal reflection take when does it take place so whenever light is incident from a rarer medium to denser medium in more than with the angle of incidence more than the critical angle the whole light is totally internally reflected from the interface of the two mediums so here the refractive index of o ray is greater than the refractive index of the canada balsam layer making the canada balsam layer optically denser for o ray but rarer for e ray as a result of it the o ray gets out of the crystal due to total internal reflection from the canada balsam layer but the e ray it does not get out it passes through the crystal and we finally get the e ray as a polarized beam now what happens to the o ray generally there are charcoal black inside the hole charcoal black outside the hole nickel prism and the o ray gets absorbed by it and whenever we are using nickel prism we get one plain polarized light with the direction of vibration being parallel to the principal section of the nickel prism that is we get one plain polarized light again we can use polaroids also to get one plain polarized light from birefringence polaroids use dichroic crystals there are some special type of birefringent crystals which absorb one of this e ray and o ray and releases only one ray so this property is called dichroism and polaroid is basically a thin film of nitrocellulose packed with tiny crystals tiny dichroic crystals and the speciality is that all the dichroic crystals should have their optic axis parallel to each other which determines the crystallographic axis of the polaroids so again in this case also the transmitted light is plain polarized so thus using nickel prism or polaroids we can get one plain polarized light with the help of birefringence now how to detect the polarized light for that we need analyzer so analyzer is a device which can detect whether a ray is polarized or not and if it is polarized what is the plane of polarization of that ray so generally nickel prism mm, then what do we have polaroids basically whatever things are used as polarizer can be used as an analyzer they are the same thing only their usage are different so in this regard we have a law called mellas law which states that the intensity of a plane polarized light that passes through an analyzer 
there is as the square of the cosine of the angle between the plane of polarizer and the analyzer so here if theta is the angle between plane of polarizer and analyzer then intensity i will be proportional to cos square theta or i will be equal to i not cos square theta where i not being the incident rays intensity so for theta equal to 0 we can see that easily from the equation for theta equal to 0 we will have i equal to i not and for theta equal to 2n plus 1 pi by 2 that is odd multiple of pi by 2 we will have 0 so whenever this thing happens that is theta is odd multiple of pi by 2 that means that if this is the axis of our polarizer this will be the axis of our analyzer and the angle between them is 90 degree so this is known as cross polaroids and here we will get zero intensity out of it so here n obviously will be any integer so why does it happen because whenever light is polarized it means that we will have the electric field along a particular direction and suppose we have kept the analyzer here the dot dot sign is the axis of the analyzer so it will have if this is e then its projection along this direction will be e cos theta and you know intensity is proportional to amplitude square so it is proportional to e0 square cos square theta we call e0 square as i0 so from there we get i equal to i0 cos square theta now what happens when an unpolarized light passes through a polarizer what happens to its intensity so for one ray we can say that let this be the electric field direction e and this be the plane of polarizer so we will have to take the projection of e onto this plane which will give me e cos theta so this is true for one ray but unpolarized ray for unpolarized ray the direction of e can be anything it can be this it can be this it can be this so we will have different projections of e so theta will vary from 0 to 2 pi so ultimately when we see we will see an average intensity so intensity average can be calculated by averaging i naught cos square theta over entire 2 theta range and thus by doing a simple integration we get that i average equal to i naught by 2 i naught being the intensity of the primary incident beam so here you can see that a beam unpolarized beam of intensity i naught falls on a polarizer and then it is being polarized so that is why there is no dots here only the arrow signs are here and the intensity has become i naught by 2 again if we use an analyzer to get the plane of polarization and if the angle between the polarizer and analyzer is theta we get the intensity to be i naught by 2 into cos square theta now how to detect linear polarized light using an analyzer so i will repeat actually the same thing here you can see that whenever in the first case here theta is 0 or n pi that means the axis of the polarizer is parallel to the axis of the analyzer and whenever this thing happens the whole intensity is transmitted through the analyzer so here is a i naught by 2 intensity here is also i naught by 2 intensity in the next one here we can see that the polaroids are in cross position that is the angle between the polarizer and analyzer is odd multiple of pi by 2 so whenever this happens no intensity can pass through the analyzer we get a zero intensity now 
look at the picture so whenever this is the polarizer this is the analyzer whenever they are parallel we get full intensity whenever they are in cross position we will get zero intensity so when in a complete rotation happens how many positions do we get for theta equal to zero or even multiple of pi by two and how many positions do we get for theta equal to odd multiple of pi by 2 actually there will be two positions this one and this one for theta equal to 0 and pi and for these two positions we will get full intensity in these two position this one and this one that is theta, theta equal to 90 degree and 270 degree we will get zero intensity so for a complete rotation of the analyzer we will get two positions of maxima and two positions of zero minimum now the fourth method of producing polarized light is polarization by scattering it is daily seen by us because the polarization by scattering occurs in atmosphere leading to the blue sky so here we can see that the whenever a unpo an unpolarized light is scattered by the molecules of the medium so the parallel rays that is the rays which go along the direction of the incident ray they are completely unpolarized but the perpendicular rays that is the rays that is the rays which go along the perpendicular direction to the incident light they are completely polarized and the polarization by scattering is followed by Rayleigh's law of scattering and the amount of scattering is proportional to 1 by lambda to the power 4 that is why in sunlight the wavelength of violet or blue is the lowest that is why we get to see the sky as blue. Now, apart from plane polarized light, there are two other types of polarized light called the elliptically polarized light and circularly polarized light. And we generally form them by superposition of two plane polarized waves moving along the same direction and following the rules of vector addition. One thing is very important here that the rays they must have mutually perpendicular plane of vibration that is the rays will vibrate in two mutually perpendicular planes they will superpose and they will give us linear elliptical or circularly polarized light depending on the on their amplitude and the phase shift between the two waves. So as we all are familiar with this thing, the plane polarized light, so we have already discussed this through this whole class that the electric field vibrates in a plane. That is the vibration is confined in a plane. So the orientation does not change. Orientation is electric field. It is confined to a particular direction. Only the magnitude may change or the magnitude will change with time but the direction will always remain same and we can get plane polarized light by superposition of two waves two waves having mutually perpendicular direction of electric field with a phase difference of 0 or pi or the multiples of pi so actually there is a rigorous mathematics to do so and finally we get the formulas like ex plus minus ey equal to constant which will give us equation of line that is why we get plane polarized or linear polarized light then we come to elliptically polarized light so first we should know what is elliptically polarized light in this case the tip of the electric field vector 
rotates with time and here the magnitude as well as orientation both change and we get elliptically polarized light by superposing waves of unequal amplitude and they differ in phase by 90 degree. So if we do the same mathematics for elliptically polarized light the equations come as Ex square by A square plus Ey square by B square equal to 1 which is the equation of an ellipse with semi major and semi minor axis as A and B. Now you can see that if here only A and B becomes equal we get an equation of a circle. This thing happens for circularly polarized light. So in case of circularly polarized light the tip of the electric field vector rotates along a circle. So the magnitude remains same but the orientation changes with time that is it will move along a circle the tip of the electric field vector will move along a circle with time. So here the superposing waves have equal amplitude and they differ in phase by 90 degrees. So their equations can be written by Ex square plus y, Ey square as I said earlier that A will be equal to B. So this will be equal to this will be equal to a square. So thus there are different types of polarized light and in 3D movies as I said in the earlier days two mutually perpendicular polaroids are used this type and this type where the first one has the axis like this, the next one has the axis like this. But nowadays the filters, the polaroids used not the linear one but the circular one. Left circularly polarized filter and right circularly polarized filter. So here I will stop today. Thank you.